Welcome everyone. Today we want to look at another aspect of microbiology uh, in terms of microbes that are important. We will be looking at fungi on a basic classification of fungi. Even though we are talking about microorganisms, fungi they are also in the class of microorganisms. Some of them are macro. I mean, we can see them with our naked eyes. Why some cannot be seen with our naked eyes? Those that we cannot see with our naked eyes, we call them microfungi. Why those that we can see with our naked eyes are macrofungi? But because fungi, they are diverse. They are diverse in the sense that they have different types of fungal shapes. We have different types of morphology, um, physical appearances, and so on. But they are similar things that bring them together, which is the fact that their reproductive lifestyle and their cellular shape, I mean, their cellular content, their cell work content, and their cell morphology. These are what uh, have, these are what brings them together. These are the similarities that they have. That they are all classified as fungi, but they are in diverse form. So we have the macrofungi, we have the microfungi. So again, fungi they are. They are usually not classified as a genus. A typical bacteria that are a genus, fungi, they are usually classified in the kingdom. We have them in the kingdom, then we have classes. So the reason why we call a uh, kingdom of fungi is because they have similarities with big eukaryotic cell. They are more like insects. They have similarity with insects. They have similarity with some multicellular organisms which are basically classified as lower animals. So in these, there are basic features that fungi share with these big eukaryotic cells, eukaryotic multicellular organisms that are different from bacteria, which makes them to be classified, I mean, grouped under the um, same taxonomy as kingdom fungi, not genus. One of the fact is that like I said, they are eukaryotes. They are eukaryotes, and they have similarity in terms of cellular structure, and cellular uh, nature, like plants and some other animals. And they are also heterotrophic, means they cannot synthesize their own food. They cannot manufacture their food. It depends on ready-made food. It could be an organic matter that is decomposing, and they can also act like a parasite. A typical fungi, they are usually saprophytic. Some of them may be parasite. And these are features that make them to be similar to um, higher eukaryotic, different from prokaryotic organisms like bacteria and archaea. So their cell wall content also is another distinguishing factor that makes them to be classified and economic taxonomically grouped in the kingdom, not genus, unlike plants. Fungi, they have their own cell wall composed of chitin. Unlike bacteria, they have their own chitin. Bacteria have pedotoplecan, but cell wall of fungi are primarily composed of chitin. And they don't have, they don't have, they don't have cellulose, they don't have pedotoplecan, but they have their own cell wall that is made up of chitin. And this is usually similar, like exoskeleton of insects, like crabs, like, um, some of these crustaceans, like also some of these um, amphibs, so they have exoskeletons, and this is similar uh, features that is found in higher organisms, which are different from those that are minute, like prokaryotic. Even though they are microorganisms, they have this uh, differentiation, so we cannot put them under the genus. Then they are good form; they have uh, they come in different, they have the, they come in different shapes and sizes. And they have a compartment cell wall, and they have thread like structure called hyphae that form mycelium. So they have the different cell compartment for their organelles, which make them to be different from prokaryotic. Now, for the new classification of fungi in, in, in biology, things keep, things keep getting updated. Every time there are new information on genetic structure, genetic sequences, and all that. For the latest classification of fungi, we have five classifications. 
We used to have little mycota, which is, which is called the imperfect fungi, but now it has been replaced and we no longer have it among the classification of fungi. So these are the five major classification of fungi that is, that is now being seen as the main fungi. We have the cardiomycota, we have the zygomycota, we have the ascomycota, basidiomycota, and glomerulomycota. Uh, so they are the basic classification of fungi that are available for study and they are diverse, they are, they are found everywhere. And we are going to look at them briefly one after the other. The chytidomycota, chytidomycota, they are those aquatic fungi that have a lot of similarity with protists. They, they are usually found in the aquatic environment. Their habitat is in the water and the, some of them, they live on land. A majority of them are found in the water environment. They are aquatic fungi. They are also microscopic in nature. And some of the species also found their habitats on plants where they behave like parasites. And some of them also act like parasites on insects or amphibians. So, Cardiomycota is a typical aquatic fungi which are, which are usually found in the water body. They only have a class, which is Chytridomycetes, and they are called chytrids. They are most primitive among the fungi, and like I said, we have some of them as parasites, while others are saprophytes. In their reproductive cycle, it includes both sexual and asexual phases. And a typical example is water molds or allomyces. So these are examples of chytrids, which are found in the aquatic environment. What are their basic characteristics? They are usually found in the fresh water or wet environments, although a few of them are found in the terrestrial environment. And they possess a cell wall that is composed of chitin, which is a, a, a normal characteristic of every fungi. They have a chitin in their cell wall. And they also exhibit a different types of feeding strategy. Some of them are saprophytic, some are parasitic, and some exhibit symbiotic feeding lifestyle. And they reproduce using a flagellated spores. Their spores have been adapted into the aquatic environment and it has a flagella that allows the spores to swim with the it swim to different parts of the um, water environment. So their spores have these adaptive features which are the presence of flagella. It helps in dispersing them. And some of them can also undergo sexual reproduction by forming spores. These spores are found in the terrestrial environment which are usually very, very um, resistant to harsh conditions such as high temperature, such as um, pressure and some other detrimental environmental conditions which allow them to survive long in the environment. And they, are, they possess a flagellum in their, for their use spores, which is what I mentioned earlier allow their motility in the environment. So, uh, chytrids are basic aquatic fungi. So, among many other fungi that are known, they are the most found in the water and they are found there to dominate the aquatic environment in terms of the types of fungi that are found easily in the water environment. The next one is zygomycota. They are typical terrestrial fungi, and they are usually saprophytes. Saprophytes are organisms that live on dead organic matters. So they, they are characterized by the presence of zygospores which are formed through their sexual reproduction. An example, we have the bread mold, and we also, we know, we also have the mocha, which usually soft, which usually, usually come up on surface of breads, old breads, 
some decayed fruits and vegetables. Characteristics of zygomycota is that they are fast growing fungi and they can be found in various environments. Usually, in the terrestrial environment, they act as decomposers. They help to break down the cane organic matters. And some of them also act as parasites, although majorly they are saprophytes. But some may live on plants and also animals as parasites. And they possess a well developed network of hyphae, which is like a thread like uh, filament in their vegetative body in such a way that they have a, a, a structured hyphae makes them to be a bit advanced. They are also opportunistic pathogen, which means they can cause disease in humans and animals under certain conditions that are suitable for them to grow. When there's a bridge, when there's a bridge or there's an immunocompromised state, and this organism, such as zygomycetes, penetrates cell of plants or animal or humans, they can easily cause disease. So they are not usually a virulent pathogen, but they are opportunistic pathogen. Their type of reproduction is through the production of spores, which are which or, which which can come in different form. It can come like a sporangiospores and also like a chlamydiospore and conidia. So they are they they are asexual reproduction can come in different form like these three mentioned. Then their sexual reproduction involves the formation of gametangia which can fuse together to form zygosporangium and their zygosporangium are usually resistant to ash environments. This allows them to survive in the environment. That is why sometimes we discover that they grow on your bread, they grow on food, they grow on so many places where you expect them not to be. For instance, their spores are everywhere, but because they are not um, visible, it may not be detected easily until there is a suitable substrate for them to grow. Then they begin to germinate on these substances. The cell wall is composed primarily of chitosan. The chitosan is a derivative of chitin. Unlike other fungi, Unlike other fungi that have predominantly chitin in their cell wall, zygomycetes are composed primarily of chitosan, and this is usually part of their cell, cell wall. So they are different from other fungi in terms of cell wall composition. Their economic importance ranges from the fact that they play a considerable commercial role in terms of the product of their metabolic uh, activities. They produce some metabolites. Some of these metabolites are actually used in synthesizing some pharmaceutical products. For instance, they, 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 their metabolites are useful. Example of rhizopods that produce metabolites during their um, metabolic activities. And these metabolites are used for steroids, which is uh, applicable for bad control and other treatment of cancers and so on and so forth. So they are also useful for power immigration. People use for fungi for detoxifying the environment, which is called micro remigration. This technique uses the efficiency of their cellular degradation abilities. Their cellular degradation ability allows them to help to detoxify the environment from several pollutants that are in the environment. So they are used in micro remigration of the environment. That is one very important use of zygomycetes. Apart from the fact that they also cause disease as an opportunity, they are also relevant in the pharmaceutical and environmental environment. Next phylum is Ascomycota. The Ascomycota are usually known as sac fungi. Why do they call them sac fungi? It is because of the fact that their spores are usually found in a kind of um, structure in the sac like mode. So they call them sac fungi. So they are the biggest, I mean, the largest in the kingdom of fungi. They compose of 64,000 identified species. I mean, 
4,000 identified species. They are found in wide range of habitats, and they are also essential in the ecosystem around the world. As for my as for my quota are the largest, they are the biggest for the kingdom of Congo. We have them in so many applications, we have found them in so many aspects of life, in the industry, in the, in the medical world. We are found in several places. We have them in example, we have the Christmas, we have the Canada, we have the Sacromyces, we have the traditional species, we have the polar crust. These are examples of um, well-known as for my quota, which are found in diverse environment, ecosystem, and lifestyle. No, so the examples of those that are found, we have morals. Morals are the edible mushrooms, which are known for their distinctive um, olive food cap, and they are usually a delicacy. Some people find them very um, delicate and delicious, and they are usually consumed by some vegetarians who prefer not to eat meat. Truffles is another type of fungi which are usually found. I mean, another, another type of astomycota, which is also a fungi, which are found growing on the ground. They, they form associated with tubes, and they are known also for their delicacy. They are also found to have an intense flavor and aroma, and they are also um, uh, consumed. So we have the penicillin species, which include moles. The first antibiotic producing organism was from moles, which is uh, penicillin. And it is, they are widely used in the medical application, especially in the pharmaceutical industry. They are the foundation for the beta lactam drug. So we have the Penicillin, um, and now we have the carapenin. So this form the basis for the use of microbial metabolite for the treatment of infectious disease. Some of them are also used for cheese production. Now we have the sacromyces and this, which is the typical baker disease, which are used for bread making and fermentation process, especially in the brewing industry. These ones have been genetically modified to form a very wonderful use in the industry. And we also have the Candida Abica. Candida Abica is a typical uh, infectious ascomycota, which causes disease in the body. They are responsible for vaginal thrush among the women and oral thrush also. Some of them also form bloodstream infection. And we have the Neurospora crassa, which is also a modern fungi for genetic research because it has a very simple lifestyle and it can be well understood genetic structure. So it becomes easy for it to be studied for educational purposes. The characteristics of Ascomycota is the fact that they are both, they are, they reproduce both sexually and asexually. asexually. The sexual reproduction is by the production of spores that is called ascospores, which is usually found in the sacrum and ascar. And they, are, they have a sexual reproductive lifestyle, which can occur through various methods. And this is this is through body, fragmentation, and familiar formation. The cell wall is normally composed of chitin, which is a complex of sugar polymer. And they are usually uh, having the usually they are a, they are filamentous in nature and they have a thread like structure called hyphae. And because they are separate, the hyphae can be separate, which means they have a cross wall or a separate that lack cross wall. So, this, this, uh, this ascomycetin, this class of ascomycetin, are very important and they are relevant in the kingdom of fungi. Their ecological role includes the fact that they are decomposers. Many of them are saprophytes. They decompose dead organic matter and they help to recycle nutrients into the ecosystem. And some of them are pathogens, like candida, also as fabulous niger, they are known to be pathogens. And we also have those that form mutual relationships with the root plant, which is called Microada symbiont. And they, they help in the plant nutrient uptake. 
get the plant to grow and they also have some protection in the root of plant. And in terms of food sources, some of them are edible food substances. They can be used as food supplements. The next type of fungi we are looking at is the Basidomycota. Basidomycota are diverse in nature. And they are characterized with their club-like shape, especially their reproductive structure, which is called basidia. They are most familiar and ecologically important in the environment. They are found in the environment. They are, they are similar in terms of shape with ascomycota, but if, on a very closer look, they have different appearance. Basidomycota have a club-like shape. Why they ask my quota in terms of their own productive because they have a sac like structure. So they are different, but they are both familiar in the environment. The basidium quotas are filamentous and they they are they grow in a thread like structure called hyphae. They also form a network. They also produce sexually and they form basidia which are their spores, which is called basidial spores, which are produced during fission of sexual reproduction. So the, the typical um, structure that distinguishes the basidial mycota is the hallmark of their club-like sh club shape, which gives them out. So, and this is called basidial mycota because of this, their club-like shape. So they develop tips of hyphae and they produce basidial spores on their surface. And the typical, uh, the typical have four types of these basidial spores on their surfaces. The, the, the major difference between the basidial mycota and the ascomycota, he said, is the club shape of their uh, reproductive structure, which is quite different from the ascomycota. They can easily be, um, you know, confused together in the environment, but biologists or microbiologists can easily distinguish them because of their shape. Many of them, they form uh, conspicuous footing bodies, which are also known as uh, mushroom, pulp or skin, stink on, and shell fungi. They are found in the environment, and they are. They also have um, divided hyphae, which are they have a septic hyphae, and their hyphae are divided into internal walls with individual compartments that can house the organelles and so on. The importance of Basidiomycota is one key fact that they are also decomposers. They are key decomposers of organic matters like dead woods, leaves, and other matters in the environment. They also help in recycling of the nutrient by ensuring that some dead organic matter releases some of the internal elements such as nitrogen phosphorus into the soil and this can be used by the plants and in turn the plant can you know take some of this uh, nutrient uptake from their roots so they form a relationship with plants to enhance nutrient acquisition therefore they impact forest health and productivity wherever they are they are they, they contribute positively to the environment, to the ecosystem, to ensure that the nutrient is fertile. So they help in breaking down complex organic matters to release them into simple substances that can be either absorbed by plants or dissolved into water body. Also, edible mushrooms are valuable food source for humans and animals. So they are also found to be edible can be eaten. Just like some part of Ascomycota also that can be eaten. 
So some Basidio uh, my code my settings can also act as pathogens. They cause disease in plant and tree. Some of them can act as parasites. The last but not the least are the glomerulomycota. The glomerulomycota are recognized fungi that form symbiotic relationship with plants. They are typical obligate symbiotic microorganisms. They form a relationship with plants, especially at the plant root. They help the plants to absorb nutrients from the soil. And the plant also allows them to survive. So, what do they do? They, they typically live in the root of the plant and help in times of nutrient acquisition at the root of the plant. Their mode of reproduction is through asexual reproduction. Their sexual reproduction is very rare. Unlike other uh, fungi, their own fun sexual reproduction if it does exist, it is poorly understood as disease. An example is the Abscula mycorrhiza fungi or the ANO. Their characteristics they live within the plant root, so they are not independent. Unlike every other fungi, they are the only fungi that are independent. They are not independent. They are dependent. They cannot survive on their own. That is why they are obligate symbiotes. They rely on their on the on their, on their plant host for carbon hydrate and nutrients because the plants can synthesize its own food substances by the nutrient uptake, and this is where. They obtain their own carbohydrates for their development. So they are uniquely different from every other fungi in terms of dependency, obligacy, obligate nature in plants. Like I said previously, they reproduce asexually, and their sexual reproduction is poorly understood. And they also have thread like filaments. I extend the soil, which also increases plant root system for nutrient and water acquisition. They live in the root of the plant and there form integrate branches where they exchange nutrients between the uh, plants and their cell. Some of them also produce vesicles within the plant root and they have storage structures for nutrients essential nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and so on. So, glomerulomycota replace deuteromycota in terms of phylum. And they are the newly added uh, phylum of fungi in the kingdom fungi. This is a basic class on fungi. If you want to know more about you can read deeper, or when you go to advanced class of microbiology, then you can begin to look deeper into the kingdom of fungi. But to then, we remain at this level of basic information of fungi. Thank you for listening.